Hello friends, this video on DNF block elements part 34 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The chemistry of actinide is not so smooth as that of lanthanide. Justify the statement by giving the examples from the oxidation state. See, the lanthanides, the oxidation state is plus 2, plus 3 and plus 4. Only. Out of these, plus 3 is the most common. That's the only thing we know. Right? Limited number of oxidation state. Pretty easy to understand. Pretty smooth. Why? Because the difference between my orbitals 4f, 5d and 6s. If you write the electronic configuration of lanthanides, you'll see these orbitals there. So this is quite large. But if you talk about actinides, they show variable oxidation state. They show variable oxidation state and this is why because the energy between the 5f, 6d and 7s orbital is very less and thus the chemistry is a little not that smooth, it's a little difficult because you have so many oxidation state to handle. But here also the common oxidation state is plus 3 but it shows a lot of variable oxidation state plus 4, plus 5, plus 7 like that. Okay. What is the last element in the series of actinide? We know the last element is Lorentzium, right? Lr atomic number 103. This is the last element in the actinides. Okay, by the electronic configuration will be 5f14, 6d1, 7s2. This is the electronic configuration of Lorentzium. What about the possible oxidation state? So if it lose three electrons, it will attain the stable configuration. So plus three is the most common oxidation state for Lorentzian. Okay. The next is using Hohn's rule, derive the electronic configuration of Ce3+. Ce3+, first let's derive for Ce, atomic number is 58. So for that, let's derive that, uh, let's start the game, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 or we can actually see the nearest uh, noble gas and we can reduce our effort but let's do this, we don't know the nearest noble gas, let's suppose and we can take this help of this chart, right, 2p6 and 3s, 3s2 then 3p, 3p6 and then 4s. 4s2, and then 3d, 3d10, and then 4p, 4p6, and then 5s, 5s2, right, and then 4d, 4d10, 4d10, then 5p, 5p6, and then 6s, 6s2. 6s2 is done and then I have 4f, 4f and then we have 5d. So typically d orbital is spent first and this is 4f1, 5d2. That is the cerium. Okay. Now if you talk about cerium plus 3, you take out 3 electrons, you take out 3 electrons from so it is 5d1. You take 3 electrons from this d and S. You take out this electron from D and S. Okay. Cdm3 plus will be this whole thing till 5p6 and then 4f1. That will be the Cdm3 plus. Okay. Now we talk about the lone pairs. The number of lone pairs in Cdm or you talk about Okay, so we have to find the uh, magnetic moment of cerium. Please note, we have to find the magnetic moment of cerium, not cerium 2 plus. So we have lone pairs, F has one lone pair, D has one lone pair. The total lone pair is 2, so mu is n into n plus 2, n is 2 here, that is 2 into 2 plus 2, that is 2 into 4, that is 8. Root of 8, that is 2.828 bar magnet of, that is the magnetic moment of cerium. What can be inferred from the magnetic moment of these complex? 
So the question is, what can be inferred from the magnetic moments values for this complex? For K4, M and C in 6, the magnetic moment is given 2.2 bar magneton. What can be inferred from this? See, something which we know that if N is equal to 1, the number of lone uh, unpaired electron, mu is nothing but root of N into N plus 2. And that comes out to be root 3, that is nothing but 1.732. If N is equal to 2, mu is nothing but root of N, that is 2 plus 2 into 2. And that is nothing but root 8, that is nothing but 2.8. Similarly, if you see, this value of 2.2 is almost near to 2.83. That means for this, N is equal to 2. Okay. That is okay. No. Is 2.2 more near to 2.83 or 1.732? I will say it is more near to 1.732. So n is equal to 1. Okay. You should take the lower values because this value, whatever I am talking about, is only because of the orbital uh, spin angular momentum, not because of angular momentum, angular, angular uh, or orbital angular momentum. This is only because of spin angular momentum. So this you take the lower values. So n is equal to 1 for this. Okay. So let's see the uh, atomic uh, oxidation state. Minus 1, this becomes plus 2. So mn has a plus 2 oxidation state. If you write the electronic configuration of mn2+, plus, you get 3d5, 4s, 0. Okay, 3D5 implies what? 3D5 implies 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 unpaired electron. But experimental value says 1 unpaired electron. What does it specify? It means that your Cn minus is actually a strong ligand. This is a strong ligand. And it pairs with this electron. So, four of these Cn minus actually paired with these electrons and thus you have only one unpaired electron left. Okay, so if you want to know whether the ligand that is attached to this particular transition metal is strong or weak that you can actually find from this value. If the actual magnetic moment is given, right, experimental magnetic moment and that gives you a hint that the number of unpaired electron is only one, but you actually see theoretically it has, it should be five, then there is some issue, right? Four of the unpaired electrons are paired. And that means the ligands are strong enough to pair with the manganese unpaired electron. Okay, let's see this first. To understand this, FeH2O6 plus. So in this case, if you see the oxidation state, this is, H2O is 0 actually, so iron has plus 2 oxidation state. Okay, so iron has plus 2 oxidation state, so the electronic configuration of iron plus 2 will be argon 3D6. Okay, so with this, the number of unpaired electron is how much? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The number of unpaired electron is 4. That is theoretical value. Let's see the experimental value. Experimental value is 5.3 Bohr magneton. So we don't have the values, so let's put the values for 3. Bohr, uh, magnetic moment will come out to be 3 plus 2 into 3, that is 5 into 3, root 15, and that is 3.87. For n is equal to 4, magnetic moment will come out to be 4 plus 2 into 4, that is 8 into 4, that is 6 into 4, that is 224. That is 4.89. For n is equal to 5, magnetic moment come out to be 5 plus 2 into 5 root. And you solve this, you get 5.92. This value is 5.3. That means I'm talking about n is equal to 5. So experimental value of n is sorry, I would like the lower value, right? So lower value lower than 5.3 is 4.89. So n is equal to 4. So experimental also. I see the number of unpaired electrons is 4 and theoretically also the number of unpaired electrons is 4. That means the legion that is attached to iron, in this case water, is a weak legion. 
and it does not pair with this electron. Okay, if it is a strong legend, it will pair with this electrons and the number of unpaired electrons value experimentally will come out to be less. Let's take one more example of this K2MnCl4. So in this case, the uh, oxidation state of Mn is plus 2. So plus 2, we know we have just seen the plus 2 N theoretical, theoretical N theory comes out to be 5 actually. Right, we have seen this Mn2, right? 5. And let's see the experimental. So, experimental value of N is 5.9, 5.9, and 5.9 to almost same, right? It's almost 5.9, actually 5.9. I'll say I'll make it 5.9. 5.9 exactly same. So, experimental also it's 5. That means here Cl is minus is also a weak legend and does not pair with electron. Here we have seen that only Cn minus is a strong legend and pairs with electron, thus. The number of unpaired electron value came down in the experimental value. Okay. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.